David Clevin is best known <laughs> as the Critter Man. He is. We will be tonight at the Hastings Museum. Show is at seven o'clock. Yeah. Uh, we've got movies at six o'clock. Pizza at five o'clock. It's going to be a great show. He has been kind enough to join us this morning to bring some of his menagerie. Let's start with what you've got in your hand right here. I'm going to keep a little bit of a safe distance. <laughs> what is this Critter well, Man? Well, I thought we could get closer. This is yeah. Chuck too. His name means python, and this is the smallest python in Africa called a royal ball python. We're actually kind of holding him up next to your jacket there. Thought it yeah. might make a nice necktie, and of course it's kind of funny, you know, with a necktie there. But these guys are just uh, small constrictors that hunt and eat rats and mice. You know, uh, people are always afraid of things that they don't understand. And really, most snakes on the planet completely harmless to people, but they are nature's rodent control. So we want to get across positive messages about these animals, and also tonight hopefully introduce people to some animals that they might not automatically think of when they think of Africa. Right, that's a, exactly right. Yeah. And so that is not necessarily a dangerous snake as far as no. bites or anything. And when we think of pythons, we think of the giant ones and the constricting and stuff Absolutely. like that. This one would not necessarily be able to do that to a No, human. never get big enough to take on something the size of a person. As a matter of fact, a python like that would start out eating something about this size, okay. bugs and insects, and work its way up onto rodents. Now, and of course, this is what? Here? This is a Madagascar hissing cockroach, which is actually found in a different part of Africa. See, most people, when they picture, uh, like, Kenya, and that's the 3D movie that's taking place tonight, right. is, uh, is, you know, that's like the you know, traditional safari, giraffes, zebra, elephants, lions, and things like that. Yeah. And we will meet one animal tonight that's found in Kenya, but the other six animals are found in all different parts of Africa. This guy here is found in Madagascar. It's called a Madagascar hissing cockroach. And, of course, they get their name because of their defense is to make a very loud hissing sound. Uh-huh. Which, of course, because that works because many animals and some humans may be standing to the left of me, although not immediately, uh, have told me they may be a little afraid of snakes, which is something that a lot of right, people have right. a fear of. And that's the big man over here. Of course, I, I wasn't was calling anybody go, out personally. It, yeah, I mean, just right. you know, just the general direction, of course. Right. Well, have you have you ever dealt with two bigger sissies? Uh, uh, actually, I've dealt with a lot of people that are afraid of animals yes, like this right. and freaked out. And that's kind of what I like to do is get across that you know, okay, this may look gross and disgusting. The Madagascar hissing cockroach. Right. I like to think of a critter man as more of a healthy respect than, a, than a total fear. But Absolutely. Absolutely. But things are connected to each other in nature, and that's something that's important to understand as well. So you might not well, like snakes, but you <laughs> certainly don't want mice and rats destroying farmers' crops, right, okay? Right, that's so, exactly right. So Madagascar hissing cockroaches may look creepy, but then, of course, there's animals that survive off eating only things like Madagascar hissing cockroaches uh -huh. and bugs, like this little uh, unusual animal that most people cannot identify. No, I can't. Yeah. I can't. He looks like a little porcupine or a, little hedgehog, or a hedgehog. Those are the two guesses. Believe it or not, he's not related to either animal. Huh. Yes, he's also not related to a, porky, uh, a puffer fish or a cactus either, I like to tell people. This is actually called a giant tenric. Tenric, oh, tenric. Yes. And they are found in the island of Madagascar. And these guys, the re re reason I'm wearing a glove here is because they have these very sharp very claws. Sharp claws. Oh, yeah, they can yeah. climb trees even upside down, and they will uh, hunt Madagascar hissing cockroaches. And it really points out, again, we talk about these food chains and Absolutely. the interconnectedness of everything, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah, and that's, and that's a very important thing for people to understand is that, you know, we are connected to all of that as well. We survive and live off the land. And uh, this little tenric here, you know, if it weren't for those Madagascar hissing cockroaches, he wouldn't be able to survive. But here's the thing, he's especially adapted for hunting them uh -huh. because that animal's defense mechanism is to hiss, make a, make a an animal think there's a snake nearby? Right. Snakes have to swallow everything whole. There's no chance okay. that they're going to be able to hunt and eat him. So right. therefore, he's got this very special defense mechanism, and of course, he has an excellent sense of smell, which is why I'm wearing the glove because he smells the Madagascar hissing yeah, cockroach right. on my hand. And yes. you don't want him to think it's meal time. Oh, quite which yet. he does, which he does all the time. Right. And so we're we're going to share a lot about these animals and how they live and survive. But you know, the overall message is that people understand and care more about the environment and seeing wonderful movies oh, like the one wow. about Kenya yeah. and bringing out live animals for people to meet and learn about them, help them to understand how we are connected. This animal in many places is an endangered species. It's called an African leopard tortoise. And uh, this tortoise, as big as he looks, is not done growing. He'd be a perfect bowling ball for Fred Flintstone. Well. Sorry kids, that's an old <laughs> reference, okay? Right. But he weighs about 16 pounds. He could weigh up to 88 pounds, wow. and they can easily live 50 years out in the wild, and sometimes over 100 to 150 years in captivity. Yeah, just amazing here. Yeah, everything that they do is slow, and this animal is actually found in Kenya. Huh. And of course, this large dome shell, very thick, very hard, protects them from predators uh, like hyenas and lions. Uh, very difficult for those animals to penetrate the shell. You can feel the shell there anywhere you want to, and you can see how thick that is. And once again, we oh, see yeah. the colors that help them yes. blend into the environment too, kind of. 
like the snake was. Absolutely. And I guess my jacket, I would work well in Kenya with that. Absolutely. But, well, as a matter of fact, you see traditional khaki safari clothes. That was the idea is you wanted to blend in or camouflage. You wouldn't wear army um, camouflage right. because there's not a lot of green out there during certain seasons. But if you went into the Congo rainforest where you could find the ball python, then you'd want to wear different colors of, uh, you know, of khakis. Yeah. Because then you kind of blend in the environment. And the idea is that when you go on safari, you have to stay quiet and take your time in order to be able to see the animals. We're going to make it really easy for everyone tonight. We're going to have the animals out right in front, and at the end of my program, everyone will have a chance to touch at least one of the animals from the program. Yeah, amazing. We'll go through that time. But let me ask one more question. This yes. guy is eating mostly plants. Is mm -hmm. that yes? Okay. He is an herbivore. Uh, they're traditionally found on the grasslands, but they can live uh, through very, very long drought periods. So they can live and survive in deserts that have plants. Okay. So you won't find them in the Sahara because there's not a lot of plants growing there. But you could find them in other deserts, desert-like regions where it's extremely extremely dry because they can eat uh, plants like cactus. Right. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And as you said, you can get up close and personal with these animals tonight at the Hastings Museum. Your show starts at 7. Yes. We've got Kenya, Animal Kingdom 3D starting at 6. Pizza at 5 o'clock. Make sure if you're interested in pizza, try to call by noon so they can make sure they got enough to the Hastings Museum. It's going to be a great night of getting wild at the Hastings Museum. Of course, you can find all that information at HastingsMuseum.org. Critterman, we're thrilled you came to join us this morning. Thank you you so much for joining Th thank us. Thank you for having us this morning. Enjoy your time while you're here in central Nebraska and uh, thank you for letting me get close at a safe distance with a lot of yeah, these Yeah, and he could have gotten closer too, too, I think. Try it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. There we are. That's 16 oh, pounds right there. Pounds. Wow. Not like a shot put? Yeah. <laughs> Don't shot just put him this just morning. Just a phenomenal thing. Stay with us. We're back with more News 5 today right after this.